We are going back to school. And yes, you heard that right. When I say we, I mean you and me. I'm ready. I'm ready. We're going back to school. Backpack. I'm ready to go. A few weeks ago, I shared that I am going back to school for practical, hands-on AI and machine learning. Now, this is done through a school here in Toronto that I am going to be going to or attending. Actually, it's virtual. Oh, it's remote? We're, we're doing this remote? Okay. Guess I'll just... Uh park myself down. But you get the point, attending these classes, this is a year long program. So I am committed. This feels like a commitment. I'm sharing this with you because throughout my journey, uh, learning about different areas around artificial intelligence, machine learning, having the exposure and experience from both the technical side of things, but then also to the business side of things, I wanna share it with you. I want you, I mean, this kind of sounds like a win-win. You get to take this course essentially, but for free. I mean, you're not taking this course, but I'm going to be sharing with you my learnings and my highs, my lows along the way. I'm sharing this with you or this recap with you because it got me thinking. As I was starting to prepare for class, which is coming up in 12 days, which is wild by the way, I thought, Jeff, what is your plan? What is your roadmap for learning AI? Are you just gonna go in and wing it or what? what's the plan? Other than of course having a proper syllabus that I'm going to follow and whatnot. Now I've been studying AI for, I would say about the past year on my own. I've been sharing a lot of my learnings with you. So that's not going to change. It's just in a more formal setting. I, I just felt like I wanted to take that next step. I'm sharing all this because I wanna share with you the roadmap that I came up with for how to learn AI in 2024. Now this is a really, it was really challenging for me to come up with this roadmap for a few reasons. One, because I felt like it really depends on what role or what area in AI you are interested in. That will depict what you are learning about AI. But I thought, you know what's a good place to start? Let's start with the basics. Let's start with some key concepts. From there, let's go more into some courses you can take, some communities you can join, and what next steps look like. I think that sounds like a good plan. What do you think, school tip? Yeah, that sounds good. I guess I guess I can take my backpack off still. All right, she said so. Let's get into it. So regardless of what path you are interested in when it comes to AI, there's a few things that you should know or terms you should know no matter what. Let's break down the three kind of ways AI is really looked at at a very high level. And I don't wanna say three types of AI or anything like that because there's so many, but let's focus on the main three. One being artificial narrow intelligence or ANI. So this is essentially how we interact often with AI today. So you can think of it as AI performs a single task. So something like voice recognition or something like recommendations on streaming services. This is using ANI. Then we have AGI or artificial general intelligence. And this is something you've probably seen in the news a lot, or this is one of the more common ones, mainly because of speculations of what it could look like. This is something we do not have today, uh, but what it essentially is, is the ability for AI to understand, learn, adapt, and implement knowledge across a wide range of tasks at a human level. So it can solve its own problems, build out different solutions to things. It doesn't necessarily need us to guide it as much. Then we have the third, which is more kind of like from back to the future. Well, I don't even think back to the future was this far in the future, but that is ASI. And that is artificial super intelligence, which honestly, is kind of what it sounds like. It is, well, they call it the final level of AI, I don't know, but it refers to a futuristic scenario where AI surpasses human intelligence. So it is taking one step further, you could say, as far as its ability to think on its own, act on its own, and really be able to do many, if not, yeah, I would say many jobs that we do today. Now this is not a video to scare you about what the future of AI could look like, but more so just to make you aware of the different types of AI or how it's kind of categorized. And before we get to ASI, super intelligence, we are very far from that. So let's just keep that in mind. And I think as we always do as humans, we figure it out as we go along and that's the beauty of it. Anyways, let's keep on diving into it. I also wanted to cover what is the difference between something like data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, or deep learning. I'll put up on screen here this graph or chart, which I think does a good job of explaining it. And I wanted to break down these topics for you because they're often used interchangeably or tied so close together, which in some scenarios makes sense, but in others, 
we almost generalize these big topics just because they're buzzwords. So as you can see from this diagram, AI is programs with the ability to learn and reason like humans. Machine learning is the algorithms with the ability to learn without any explicitly programmed. So they are learning from models and data and just really understanding as far as um, they're, they're based on algorithms. They are algorithms at the end of the day. Then we have deep learning, which is essentially a subset of machine learning in which a artificial neural networks adapt and learn from larger databases. So as you can see, even within AI, there is so many layers to it and it can get intense pretty quickly. I know what you're thinking. Well, maybe you know what you're thinking, but I'll tell you what I was thinking when I was learning all this. Well, if there is so much to AI, what is the point of even learning? It seems like every time I take a course or have a discussion about it, I feel like I'm falling behind. And I hear you on that. I feel that way oftentimes too. One thing I've learned though throughout uh, learning AI or any other technology is you just need to take it step by step. The worst thing you can do is just not try to learn at all because of that feeling of, ah, uh, it's just moving too quickly for me. It's okay, you will feel caught up at some point. It's just that initial learning curve that can feel a little bit overwhelming. So I just wanted to say that as a side note, don't get too caught up on how vast the subject is, especially, which brings me to my next point, is having an understanding of what area in AI you want to focus on. Let's use the example of, say you are interested in ethics around AI and regulations around that. Maybe you come from a law degree or a psychology background and you're really interested in that side, especially around the regulations with AI. Now, this is something where I wouldn't suggest, okay, you need to go start with Python, learning programming in order to become an expert in that area. It's more so around the psychology of it, the regulations, the, the law that's required with these regulations. That, those are areas you need to be an expert in. Now, you do need to be extremely educated on artificial intelligence and its capabilities as well to make those decisions, but you don't need to become a programmer. And I really wanted to highlight that because before you even dive into your journey with AI, take time to understand how you want to use this, how you want to use this in your career, how you want to grow with AI, what, what's the purpose of your learnings? And even if it's just because you want to learn something interesting, that will look different as well. All right, let's move on to some courses. Now, these are courses that are both technical and some are non-technical for the reason being, I know we have an audience of both. And I think even if you are a technical person, maybe you don't want to dive into the technical side of AI and that's fine too. I talk about these courses a lot, the first ones I'm going to mention, which is Coursera courses, mainly because they are taught by some of the world's best leaders when it comes to AI. I mean, deep learning specialization, this is a course that covers deep learning, structured machine learning projects, and neural networks. And this, of course, is by one of Coursera's co-founders, Andrew, so it's a really great course. Now, I haven't taken this course specifically, but I've taken a ton of other courses by him around AI, and they are so brilliant. The way he can break down topics in such a simplistic form is really incredible. The other one I want to share with is Udacity. So if you are interested in really garnering or gaining that degree or certification, Udacity is definitely a place to check out. One that stands out to me is the Machine Learning Engineer Nano Degree. So this is a program that focuses on advanced machine learning techniques and algorithms. So if you are more on the technical side, I would definitely recommend checking this out. I mean, it always is good too, to get that certification or in this case, a nano degree that you can put on your LinkedIn. Ding! I don't know, any sound effect. Ding! Can you tell it's been end of day? I've had too much coffee. It's, it's, I'm in Canada, it's, it's dark at like five now, it's, it's happening. All right, let's keep on moving. One more I wanna share with you is about MIT OpenCourseWare. I love MIT, I love their newsletter, I love every, I, they're just so innovative, I think they're great. One course though that they offer is called Introduction to Deep Learning. So this is a course that really starts from the foundations working the way up into deep learning methods and applications. So this is more so kind of a mix of technical and non-technical, but I'd recommend it to both um, individuals. All right, let's talk a little bit about community. And I think this is funny because I don't hear, when I read online, you know, when I research for these videos, I read online what other people are saying and other guides around the roadmap for 2024 AI. And sometimes they can be so specific that I think, who is this for? Because it sounds like you're making it seem like the only people that can get into learning about AI are these super hackers. Or the other side is, it's very non-technical and it feels like, well, what, like who is your audience? And that's why for this video, I wanted to keep it very realistic as though that everyone, every single person watching this video has their own journey. No one's alike. 
and your goals with your learnings are all unique as well. And that's really important to keep in mind because there's no prescription overall that I can be like, next, you need to learn Python. Next, you need to learn that because that's not accurate. It really depends on what you want to do. The purpose of this video is more so for you to uncover that, take away what some of the key topics are. And that's why I really wanted to bring up community because community is one of those things that if you don't have it, you're going to struggle. Oftentimes we will struggle. I'll speak for myself. Oftentimes I will struggle with learning something new. I need that sense of community to bring me up, support me. I'll share right on screen here some of my favorite communities, uh, especially in the artificial intelligence world. Also, okay, this is a really cool thing that I do. See, look at this, is this like, what was that movie? The um, Godfather, or I don't know, what's that old movie where they're like, welcome. Sorry, I'm going on a tangent now. One thing I do though oftentimes is on LinkedIn, just as a little tip, I will follow different thought leaders in technologies I'm interested in. So in artificial intelligence, in future tech, that's a really great way to stay up to date easily on different topics that they're sharing about. I mean, I try and be one of those individuals too. Um, I, I love using LinkedIn for that as well. So just following people there that really bring education and insight into your day to day. I don't know why I've kind of gravitated towards LinkedIn lately for that. All right, I hope you found this video helpful between sharing some courses, giving you some communities to join, some different tips, as well as kind of giving, starting the video off with covering some really big topics that are often spoken about almost too casually when it comes to tech, where people don't really have the context or understanding what these topics are about with machine learning or deep learning. So I really wanted to cover those as well. I hope you found this video helpful and valuable. Leave in the comments, you know I gotta say this, leave in the comments any other videos you want me to make and I will see you all soon. It's time for dinner and no more coffee for me.